Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Shavik. First of all, I would like to thank TechTable for giving me this lovely opportunity. TechTable and Let Us Lead provides you an opportunity to interact with leaders, boost your public speaking art, as well as leadership quality. And TechTable is one of the India's largest student community that provide one-stop learning experience which will help you to get an internship as well as job. Once again, I welcome all of you and thanks for showing your interest. Today, we have got an amazing speaker with us, an electrical engineer who identified a true passion for data science. Data scientist who is passionate about transforming data into useful products. Speaker who gave over more than 40 talks in past two years. Currently working as a technical lead and data scientist at IBM. The one and only Sai Shruti Swaminathan. Ma'am, good morning. Hello, good evening. Okay. Thank you so, so much for the direction. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, let's start the session. First of all, I would like to know about your journey. We all would like to know about your journey. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so again, hello, everyone. I'm just so excited to be here to be talking with you all. And, you know, this like, yeah, again, the first time I'm sharing about uh, my journey. So, uh, uh, yeah, as you all know, I'm Sai Shruti Swaminathan and I work as a technical lead and data scientist in IBM. How it all started? Uh, I'm basically from uh, a village near, uh, you know, uh, near Pondicherry, if you all know, or near uh, like Kumbagonam and all uh, in the interior part of Tamil Nadu, basically. And then I moved to a town uh, near Pondicherry. And then, you know, that's when I started. Uh, I didn't know, basically, you know, like how we all used to be in our childhood. I didn't know what I want. Uh, I actually didn't give a lot of thought about what I want. And then uh, I you know, I joined my undergrad, I moved to Chennai, and then I joined uh, Sa Sarah Mujeri College, uh, like a part of uh, Anna University. And then uh, I did my undergrad there. And, you know, uh, the uh, the beauty, of, beauty here is, I took electronics and instrumentation engineering. So uh, why I took electronics and instrumentation engineering? Uh, because I wasn't confident, uh, though I took computer science in my uh, 11th and 12th grade, uh, I wasn't confident enough to take, you know, software job. Why I wasn't confident? Because I used to get overwhelmed by seeing the number of code or the amount of code. I always used to think coding is not for me. That's a fact, right? So I thought, okay, I love missions more than software. That was my perception. And then I, you know, actually started uh, the e and I, uh, which we all know. And I did my master uh, undergrad there. Uh, and then, you know what? I joined again as a software engineer at Tata Consultancy Services. And that was my turning point. Uh, you know, there is uh, there is a lot of, even people used to make fun. Yeah, it's, you all do engineering and then you end up, you know, being as a software engineer. That's true to my case as well, but it kind of actually helped me identify, you know, what I actually like. Uh, for example, uh, I was how how it turned right like from the fear the moment I let my fear out the moment you know I let uh, my confusion out is when I got my path. Uh, so big do you want me to you know talk about my entire journey or you just want us to go uh, face by face? Hello, ma'am. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, you can. You can. You can go face by face. Uh -huh. sure. journey as well as uh, the importance of data science in our life uh, mm -hmm. in the in the coming future just to help the students and the viewers awesome so yeah so that's when uh, uh, the why i took programming right i was sitting next to my programming lead and he used to get the sound you know he used to have his keyboard like this 
and he made tak 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 he used to make a lot of sound and i kind of liked it it's like okay i want to get that sound in my keyboard and that's how i started you know liking l- liking to program and loving to code just with the sound uh, you know that pa- that curiosity took my fear out that's the point i want to make here we all think we all have the perception we have a the assumption that this is not for us right but when you actually step out of your comfort zone is when you kind of identify what you actually like and it the journey started there and it just going on and on i'm sure there are so much to do but that's how the programming journey started and yes uh, and then i planned to do my masters i came here i did my masters at uh, san jose state university in california usa uh, again even though i worked as software engineer i still had this doubt okay will i be able to do programming in my masters will i be able to crack it because my undergrad four years i dealt with machines right i took electrical engineering i got an internship in IO- iot based like internet of things based startup and you know what startups are the best place to start in my opinion uh, because they you know let you work do all the ground work right so i was put on an edge ai analytics team right i was given a drone in my hand i was given raspberry pi uh, uh, you know all the other uh, stuff that you can think of in iot sensors you know i had given wires resistors computer of course and everything was before me i i have to design something right so that's when i got introduced to data science yeah I, I, that's the first time i actually got to know like okay this field is kind of growing it's i guess roughly 5 years before uh that's how i got to know and i want to just quickly share my screen and then you know just to show what is data science to me right i'm just going to give a disclaimer so whatever i'm going to talk is purely out of my own experience and if you have any questions or if you have you know anything i'm happy to chat offline as well so yes what is data science to me this is how i saw all these pieces if you can see secure predict i mean have you played with the jigsaw puzzle like this is like, this is how the puzzle will be like to me data look like this when i first encountered uh, you know my first project in internet of things ai based when i saw the data i was like it to me it looked like a jigsaw puzzle right why from here i was able to i was able to basically create something from that puzzle to something meaningful right this is data science you don't have to you know you don't have to think so much about and this is actually like you know data science you have data everywhere around and if you have the curiosity to infer insights and tell a story about it just like how you do your puzzle just like how you do your jigsaw puzzle you have thousand pieces you're going to put things together and you're going to make it more meaningful right that's how i saw and that's how i started playing with data science so it took me like roughly i would say one and a half years to get used to the process the concepts the techniques and not even one i would say two years i would say like yeah i to get used to the process and then uh, you know i start i entered into this field that's like the high level uh, you know journey of what i went through i hope uh, it was useful for you all uh solving do you have any specific question uh hello ma'am yeah so like uh, there are a uh, few common questions uh, like the best resource to learn data science machine learning deep learning and all these things because we all uh, are keen to learn and we need some sources to learn from yes thank you so uh you know what uh, this is again uh this is out of my experience 
and this is something uh, i want all of us to think about right you, yes data science is an emerging field we are not going to stop generating data we are going to keep generating data and it's a field that's emerging it's growing is predicted to grow grow like this much percentage in like 2 years and so on it's all there but i want all of you to think about why you want to get into data science right so i entered because my mind basically wasn't able to understand the abstract things for example when i see missions right i i was yes there are a lot of concepts but i wasn't able to enjoy it right but as i showed you before to me data was more you know enjoyable it's more to me more to me it was more like a puzzle right i started solving it and i started enjoying it and i know i was able to think is you know I, I, and i was able to think about my data i was able to visualize about my data right and the more i see data my mind started thinking okay can i can i try to extract this insight let me give you an example last week i saw a telecom data right i posted this in my linkedin as well i saw a uh, telecom data so basically i uh, there is an information about why this particular company is losing a lot of customer right so i saw this data nothing was given right let me give you an example so the mind automatically starts thinking about what can i understand okay there is a column called churn churn means you are losing your customer right okay there is this column what can i learn from that and there are other columns like you know gender there's a column like how many services they have do they have phone service do they have internet service and lot of things right so my mind started thinking okay will the number of uh, you know phone lines they have uh, it affects the performance right is the internet service not working and so on so you start thinking in that angle right and once you think the tangle you are going to generate a lot of questions and from now you are going to take data and try to answer those questions right so the point i'm trying to make here is let's all be clear about why we want to break into this field right end of the day data science is not something that we are going to sit at the back and we are going to code right it's all about the innovation it's all about thinking out of your comfort zone right so i'm i'm really really happy to see all the responses you know that you're all interested to be in this field which is amazing right there are data generated in in each of our house so let's all like put this question in our mind before thinking how can i become a data scientist or how much time do i need to invest in data scientist let's have the answer why right so that's that will be my suggestion and it helped me i'm sure it will help you as well the reason i'm saying this data science is a lot of positions right you have machine learning engineer you have devops engineer you have a research scientist you have again data scientist data analytics and there is a lot of you know branches here so think about how your mind will think when it see a data right and then you take all your skills all your timelines and things and then you try to see which field you actually like which branch you actually like and start moving towards it right and again where do you want to go and uh, where can you find a lot of resources right again i'm going to tell from my own experience i guess i have them here uh, let me just show you this i hope you all can see my screen now right so the scenario that I actually faced so you know i i just first time i just took all my work along in my mind not in papers it said in my computer and so on right so i just went i know python uh, i went to a recruiter and said i know python i have like done a lot of projects i know x and y techniques i am a good data storyteller and so on right and recruiters were like oh they were pretty confused uh they 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 didn't know like okay show me right so it's very important for you to create a profile right and 
other thing i would like to share here is this one so this is the road map uh, i i used to read a lot of medium articles so this is the road map right that i saw so this covers pretty much you know a variety of uh, branches that i was talking about if you want to be a analyst if you want to be engineer a machine learning engineer if you want to be a research scientist statistician mathematician whatever you want to be right this field so this pretty much covers a list of tools uh, i have pro I, I will i have provided a link here i will share it with the team as well so that you can you know go through this they have awesome materials uh, you know connecting with each topic listed here but yeah so first you need to think about projects 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 right uh, it's not like you do a lot of you know code you have to actually show this is this is what i i had uh, i was in this phase uh, maybe like you know four and a half years uh, i think so yeah uh, so i was in this phase where i was taking you know my projects everywhere just talking out of my mouth right it of course it's not going to work so what i did this is like my other part of the story i started taking you know projects i started taking uh, you know concepts uh, let's say one example is let, you have this logistic regression algorithm right for those who are practicing data science this is like one of the basic algorithm that you all uh, will start with and what i did was i just took a use case i took a business problem i got my set of questions like how i mentioned before i started understanding the math behind right it's not like, we have lot of libraries today scikit learn one of the popular used one uh, you know where you have all your machine learning you just use your function give your data use your function get the metric and so on that's not going to help you right people or the recruiter wants to see your way of dealing with the problem right your way of telling a story your in depth understanding of the concept three things right how do you deal and understand the problem how do you plan and have develop the problem with good understanding of the solution and metrics behind and finally how good storyteller you are right that's how it's going to work so you have this uh, for example what i started doing is i started begging into data science question i started begging into algorithm i used to write all of us write notes right uh, i just took a screenshot of it and then i created a blog post out of it right like a logistic regression detail overview overview as you can see it's on to 2018 and i actually went and showed this to recruiter right now we are increasing your credibility so how many of us on linkedin you know linkedin has a predefined template right which is awesome so we just send that uh, you know can you please see my resume can you please see this it's not going to work right i i don't know any i don't know the person personally to actually you know understand what the other one knows right so something convert your work into a more uh, like you know a good material that can let me understand your work your skills your way of problem solving and your way of data storytelling right that's how i did so i started uh, you know participating in a lot of competitions and whatever i did i used to convert into a material that i can share get a profile blog post you know uh, and even like a simple talk right so i started talking about it that that's like you know the way because data science is not a, you know programming based you have to prove yourself in the 360 degree which is it is not so I, whatever i'm thinking don't think it's out of box i'm 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 i was like you know how everyone here as well i'm still learning i mean though i have like about 5 to 6 years of experience here and i'm still learning so in data science you learn every day i saw a question as well like how much time it takes for you uh, uh you know i i used to get this question like how much time do i need to prepare or how many months i need to prepare prepare yes for the initial push i would say 
uh, I, at least I did like one and a half to two years, but then you learn every single day, right? You do this, you publicize your work and you talk to people and increase your credibility, right? And that's how it worked for me. So just taking a pause here, uh, so we, uh, uh, to see like, you have questions, you have comments, do you want to share? Uh, hello, ma'am. Yeah. The, the next uh, common question is like, uh, we all know like after learning, like first you learn and then you earn. Mm -hmm. So this common thought process revolves around each and every student. So how you get a job uh, in this field? Sure. Uh, so this is, I mean, uh, whatever I'm going to say, it's out of my own experience, right? So uh, I'm someone who believe uh, it's not, it, it doesn't work if you just take your resume everywhere, right? You have to stand out in the field uh, because you, you, for sure you will get a job. It's not like you're not going to get a job. For sure you will get a job. But what kind of a quality engineer or what kind of a quality data scientist you're going to be? That because data scientists deal with every single you know, data that each one of your whoever, whoever is watching here are generating data scientists are, you know, directly or indirectly going to use it somewhere, right? You are also going to use the data that you are generating at some point, who knows? So the personality, the, you know, being responsible, showing the response, showing, you know, your, uh, your, you know, intention of creating responsible system and your expertise expertise i would say again it's not just the algorithm your way of approaching the problem you just shows you need to stand out right how do you stand out you do a lot of projects you show it to them and how do you break into this field right so how i actually did was i started networking right uh, i i am a person uh, i i started doing all the application stuff i used to go to a lot of recruit online recruiting platform i used to send 100 applications a day honestly that's how i did so uh and i used to get calls i never used to get calls and one day i actually thought okay let's stop this right uh let's let's stop uh you know just sending resumes and so on let's actually get into the community tell people who i am right and that happened when i came out of my comfort zone i was never a speaker right when i was back in india when i was in my undergrad when i was working as a software engineer i used to like my legs literally used to shake whenever i get in get onto the stage right i was never a speaker even during my school days i i'm a dancer but if people are giving me mic to talk i i used to cry that's how i was but I want to break it, right? Every time you break your comfort zone, you find something new, right? So I thought, okay, I'm going to break this. I'm going to be out in the community, right? What I did was I used to take my projects. I used to like put it on GitHub. I put, write a blog about it. I, I used to approach a lot of meetups. I used to approach, you know, a lot of, uh, I used to uh, like talk a lot in LinkedIn. Uh, if you have not right now, I think I kind of slowed down because of, you know, the work with the work that uh, I have every day. So before uh, I used to talk a lot on LinkedIn about the work that I did and I participated in a lot of competitions, Kegel competition. Uh, there are, the, you know, we all are familiar with Kegel, but Kegel is not the only platform. I actually participated in something called Driven Data Community, and I was in top 10% of uh, people uh, in the top uh, leaderboard, right? I was in top 10%, uh, if I'm not wrong. And I participated in Kegel. I wrote notebooks. And people, you know, gradually started turning their head towards me, right? OK, there is, there is a there is someone who is passionate about it, right? And your pass that's what I said, know your why. When you know your why, it comes out through your eyes. I'm not being philosophic here, but that's how it works, right? If you if you are really passionate about it, it comes through when you talk. So know your why, do your projects, get out of your comfort zone, go to the community. Of course, send your resumes. I'm not stopping it, but go to your community, talk about it, get people notice you. That's how. That's one of the ways. That's something that worked maybe for me. 
okay ma'am uh, <clears throat> the next thing is like uh, how data science is changing our world or what kind of impact is it going to have in our future world and do you really think like uh, like how important is it going to be for each and every individual that that's a great question uh, thank you for putting in uh, because this kind of matches with what i'm currently advocating for what i'm currently working for as well it's responsible ai right now ai before like people were started learning algorithms people have started learning things now pretty much just reached to the level where people are getting comfortable with the technology uh, but again data science it's it's it we you are going to play with the own data that you are generating right so we, it's all turning towards being diverse inclusive and be more responsible when building the system right so there are a lot of tools there are a lot of you know awareness that's coming in uh, at least i am based i'm personally uh, i'm one of the ethical ai advocate uh, so i i go to law, you know i meet people around i talk to them get to know them like okay you see this is the data that you are generating do you know this do you are you aware of it and i i meet like maybe a uh, 40 to 50 data scientist a month and asking about their process their way of thinking when they approach the problem and spreading the message of building responsible ai system right so if you are a data science practitioner you must have gone through the met methodology pipeline data science pipeline it's it's the same you extract the data you explore you develop the model you deploy and maintain right that's like a common pipeline now it's very important to think the trusted ai aspect for example when you're extracting the data do you know the data policy did you mask your personal information right did you when you're developing the model did you calculate for bias did you calculate for fairness is your model explainable and when you uh, you know once you deploy your model uh, is there any drift in your data is there any drift in your model right so these are coming up this is really really important uh, as you are as you asked about the trend yes there are a lot of you know new uh, data science is being used in you know all the fields some wherever there is a lot of data something or the other is getting automated and a lot of cool new projects uh new products i would say it's coming in the market but this is the whole new aspect that i want to bring it before you because the huge audience and get aware even in when you are practicing right people used to say to me okay i'm a practitioner i'm just starting data science so don't make me think about bias and fairness don't put those tools before me right but think this if you if you are a kid it's very important within 5 years uh, you know of your age people used to teach all good things so that it lies in our in our mind right that's how we all have been brought up so you need to culture this from the beginning you need to think about building responsible ai systems in the beginning that's what the entire advocacy around the entire awareness around is going at this moment inclusive diversity and making responsible ai system making more transparent and explainable i hope it answers your question uh sawik uh yes ma'am mm -hmm. uh ma'am the next thing is like uh, online we have lots of material available uh, for for learning how to know that which material is good or the best one yes uh so i i want to approach it this in a different way right what i did was i started Uh, searching for materials and i was just overwhelmed right if i just go to uh, online website i was like if i just put okay pandas for example uh, I, i mean pandas material there's like tons and tons of documentation and article about pandas right so which one to start with even the python if you're learning python let's say let's go to the base let's not even get into that let's go to the base python i, I when i started python i was like overwhelmed with the amount of you know materials that available so i did like a different method i again took a project and i started building it so the projects the use cases that it's it's available right so some top uh, just I, i just use free code camp and you know other uh, geeks for geeks 
and uh, those uh, you know even uh, lead coat uh, not the premium one even the light one i just i just take the problem right i'll take the problem and i started you know i, I will just go to some of the online platform uh, because i was a student i have uh, i don't have to pay for it which is great on course and stuff uh, i just learn the basics right i just learn the basics i know this 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 are the concept that exist and then course that i used and then i used towards data science and then i used geeks for geeks uh, and you know other uh, yeah i used geeks for geeks that that's the thing uh, that i used majorly for uh, home python for example and then i took all those use cases or the questions right and i started practicing so when i started practicing of course i got stuck and then i started finding answers for it in stack overflow you know another platform reddit and so on so when i found answers i not only learned answers for my questions i learned other methodologies right so just with one problem you are not only learning that problem you are actually learning indirectly learning a concept right there will be like 10 different answers under stack overflow for one question and if you just just have patience right don't just okay don't don't just see the tick mark and then <laughs> copy paste that put it in your code and run right just have some patience go through the page you will learn a lot i'm i'm pretty sure so each perspective matters so each person has their own perspective of solving the problem so they will all put their solution before you right and when you see there you will learn the syntax you will learn how to efficiently write the code and even i have seen a lot of people comparing the time it takes to run similar code but in using different functions right you start you start learning to it it's all practice 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 this see everything in a different perspective is my point don't go with the traditional way of approaching it thank you ma'am mm-hmm. the next question is uh, uh, is it important to have uh, previous knowledge uh, uh, the, from the field of uh, the programming or something like that just to have a fresh start is it really important to have a previous knowledge uh, i i i don't i don't believe in that honestly because you don't need any i i didn't have any previous knowledge uh, all you need is a passion to get into the field a real sheer passion to get into the field and work really hard towards it right practice every single day i mean i have seen all of us give the same comment practice 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 people used to get frustrated when i see when i say this you are asking me to practice 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 what i can practice where i can find right practice your patience first it's all out there i know there's a tons of materials what i used was coursera uh, I, i and you know i used a lot of towards data science article i didn't have any background honestly i did my instrumentation i dealt with machines it's a transition from machine to machine learning i didn't have any background so i even started python honestly when i entered my masters when i came here is when i got to know there is something called python that's that's a honest truth but it it i just i just want to learn right so my graph i i used to work since i started in between i didn't know it before i had to work twice the times to understand and i did like a lot of lot of projects every single day i guess i used to work like 7 to 8 hours you know coding learning and stuff aside from my regular uh, college work that's how i did and put it in a straight forward that uh, there's nothing called uh, you know you need to have the base okay ma'am uh, the next question is like if a student uh, having a degree like undergrad degree uh, not related to computer science at all do you think they are having a less chance in order to g- grab a good job or get a good opportunity in data science uh, that's a great question again uh, because if you go to the job description uh, with the basic thing that they ask for you is if you are do you have masters and do you have your phd right most of the job description that i have come across have this first requirement and that kind of puts you know uh, turns the light off for all you know bachelors for example it's not the case uh, honestly that's why i'm giving you the other option be out in the community right that's that's why i went out from the regular way of uh, 
send your resume for example show people that you have the skill show to the community that you have skill take a good project write a blog about it talk about it meet a lot of people there are lot tons and tons of online meetups there are tons and tons of you know uh, conferences and talks going on go be out there meet a lot of people talk about it and be really sorry be really active in the community and then you know i mean i'm all this along with your job application right once you get the one click once you find that one uh, you know a way out is when the heads are going to turn towards you so move towards that think different don't uh, just you know uh, just think okay this is not for me right it's that it doesn't work like that i have seen people who who not even have a degree entering into data science right they're they're also in my team as well they have not even they, they just did their school and they just went to a coding school right and now uh, they are, we are all working together and they are amazing i would say so it doesn't matter just just think different uh thank you ma'am so the, so the next thing is next question is uh, how to get internship especially <laughs> at ibm for a fresher uh yes so you know uh, again it all depends on the project so uh, you know just getting you know send something new right at least from where, where i in, in my linkedin i i i tend to get uh, at least minimum of 10 uh, request sending the resume honestly uh, just think for yourself do you think people who are doing like everyday job will be able to understand you just by the regular format that you know that with with what we are all sending to each other right i uh, i would like to i have this uh, i am interested in this job can you please refer me and you and we tend to send the resume that's how 80% of you know the request comes in right how do i know i i people will honestly just let's all be practical right we all get tired we are all human beings and we don't have time to go through every single line in the resume right that's why i'm i'm saying you put highlight your projects let even if it like, like it can be a github link it can be a blog post it can be a simple uh, you know 5 minute youtube video or it or you know explaining you explaining your project right so that kind of excites me personally right i, I don't have to when you see the traditional template people get tired and getting uh, into ibm again it 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 flows not just ibm with any company that's how things work right people want something different people want something new and you if you show if you if you know to show your skills in a different way is when people are going to look at you and one example is changing the normal template that we all send through linkedin that's something you know i actually wanted to share here add your projects add a presentation add a video or even explain a bit about you know your data storytelling uh, ability if you are from if you are doing in data science and even highlight your number of lines in code right even take a screenshot of your github coding statistics if you are a programmer and then show hey see i am an active coder and can you just give me like a few minutes and that actually helps people turn towards you uh so the next uh, thing is next question is how to hold our motivation like when you when we are learning a new thing mm -hmm. uh, mostly people term data science as a complex thing mm -hmm. so when you are learning such a complex thing uh, you tends to fade away mm -hmm. so at that point of time how you hold yourself again uh that's a great question again uh so how i actually did right so first time when i entered into neural networks i knew nothing about it honestly so i encountered neural networks the first time it was pretty overwhelming for me right uh, the, i used to have the same board here i used to write 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 and it will be like okay there's a lot of concepts right i i actually didn't know uh how to proceed then i took a step back first have some patience and just took a step back and then i started relating every single concept in neural network with the real life example right 
it, it's it's just the same right how we work how our mind works is how the neural network also works right first of all have some patience try to relate the concept with how with your everyday work right first don't get into the idea that it's huge right the moment you create the perception the moment you get your fear and you will stop right i'm not being philosophical here but that's the truth right approach with the open mind that it's easy right second uh, first about the concept for example how i did my neural network is i even in my talk i used to say the same think about okay these are circles and lines interacting with each other that's how i learned and then i was like okay that's exciting there's a circle and lines interacting with each other and now what next right and how i practiced all the algorithm uh, you know the math behind the algorithm so i used to uh, how i used to learn algorithm is not through practicing just you know just take your data put it in cell that's not how i did i let's say if i take the logistic regression i used to write it by myself right i don't just see or look at it the moment you start deriving the equations by yourself you will your mind you know will tend to think more right so derive all the equations just simple don't take you don't have to derive your big convolution neural network or you know a big alex don't take big things start small right start with simple linear regression for example and then start writing it down start writing the math behind it so once you learn a math behind using a simple example using a simple algorithm you are you automatically gets the energy to explore the you know complicated ones start small is my uh, you know suggestion here and write practice and okay. i guess, yeah i guess that's how the blog came i'll just send link to the blog if you see my blog it's not any fancy you know article i just posted my handwritten notes there so i i used to write a lot uh ma'am uh, here we are talking about the maths uh, involvement of maths mm -hmm. so the next thing is what are the specific thing that like the subjects of maths uh, we need for data science yes so probability statistics a uh, base of statistics not like a complicated ones uh, again i have all the resources i will forward uh, so probability of base of statistics and uh, differentiation the differential equation so these are like base of uh, you know the basic that will help that can really help you uh, and not you don't have to be an expert there uh, just learn the basics and i have like compiled a list uh, that actually help me so i can share that with you as well i'm not sure how many of you are taking a data science course here not outside but within your college or university if you are taking that then that's I, i that's great because you are going to learn in a syllabus based syllabus way if you are, if you are not in data science major that's awesome that that's okay so that's totally fine uh, i can just share you know set of resources uh, to the team and they can circulate uh, with all with with anyone they want like through their uh, medium uh the next question is uh we have a lots of pressure here so they want you to give explanation for data science in a easy manner in a easy language sure so that i think uh the one that i gave before just let me just take the screen i'm not sure if if it kind of explained or how people were able to get hold of it uh, but i'm just going to share it again so again i'm just going to say this uh this thing this like a puzzle right your jigsaw puzzle all these points here are your uh data right it's it's out everywhere right you are and you are given this puzzle before you what will you do the first thing you are going to uh, just understand okay you know you are you're going to start finding the patterns right you know your end result you know your end result is your business problem right you know what you want to get at the end right now you have all the pieces these pieces are the data right you know what you want to reach 
you have everything uh, all the data or this pieces with you now how will you approach this person you will start finding the pattern uh, sorry you are, you'll, you'll start finding the patterns right okay it has this color so let me try to find this color you have this uh, you know uh, this face this eyes and something of that sort right you will start finding patterns in your puzzle right and slowly you are going to change your uh, you know use this uh, you know this pieces and finally you are going to end up setting everything in to create this uh, you know the final pattern sorry pattern right so think like this this is what i want at the end which is my business problem or my solution right and i have all these pieces each side and they are my data right how do you approach a puzzle you know what you want you have all the pieces you will start finding the patterns you will start your mind starts finding the patterns and you gradually take those puzzles and put it in right so you are going to take your data and you are going to find you know all the patterns inside this what it's what it's going to tell you right you are going to just you know trigger your data to tell whatever you want right with tools with techniques and so on so your data is going to tell you everything and finally you are going to get into this uh, you know result which you were aiming for basically it's making your data speak right your data needs to speak you are going to make your data speak through all these techniques and you are going to get answer for your business problem so at least that's how uh, i mean i see I, i i hope it's useful for for you all okay ma'am uh, thanks a lot and uh, the next question is what is the difference between msc data science and pg diploma in data science uh i mean to be honest uh, i'm not really sure uh, i'm just being i don't want to give any answers that you know for the time being just being honest here so uh, i am not very sure about what diploma degree contains uh and what you know uh, the pg degree has i don't know the course pattern or things right uh so honestly i'm, I'm not i'm not sure maybe if i see the if you, if you have a course syllabus if you can send it to me maybe i can even go offline search about it and then answer your question to be honest because you know after my undergrad i kind of moved here and you know i kind of lost touch uh, with the curriculum uh, or whatever we have uh, in our in our curriculum so it it's going to take a bit of time for me to understand and then answer answer it better i don't want to give any answer for the sake of uh, talk okay ma'am uh, the next question is uh, someone is asking like i am in my last year of college and i will be sitting for placement soon mm-hmm. i recently discovered this field and want to find my first job here how do you suggest i deal with the time crunch sure uh so you you kind of uh, and i mean whoever is asking thanks for the question uh, again what kind of you know the quality that you are going to provide right again the time crunch is real so i would say go with you know the courses on coursera that's kind of going to consolidate right i have like three courses i'm not going to sell my course here but i'm just giving you an example so i have like data visualization or uh, open source course data visualization r python courses out on coursera uh, so i'm one of uh, i'm one of the instructors there so there's a lot of efforts that goes into creation of those courses and uh, i since i guess for students it's you can get it for free right uh, so if you just go in there because of your time crunch i would say uh, take just one platform coursera i would say for example or uh, anything that you like udemy if you like udemy then go with udemy so just take one platform stick to it don't get overwhelmed with all the other uh, you know resources that comes before you because the moment you start you please stick with it because of your time crunch stick with it and learn only just stay focused with that and start creating projects even though you have time crunch at least let's say you have four weeks right try to create minimum of two projects and have a template like this put it like data storytelling kind of thing right and just a one pager that defines your problem 
that defines your question, methodology, tool used, what is the result you got, and did you deploy your model or not, and what is the performance, right? Have like a one-page story of your project and collect and start circulating it, right? So approach projects and throw the projects you learn your uh, concept but again it's i don't know what how much time you have but try to learn uh, math try to learn in depth so that you you kind of sustain in this field right it's not like a one time learning it's you really need to understand the concept behind to be able to perform better okay ma'am thank you <clears throat> and uh... The next question is, uh, being a beginner, how and where could we, can we get those uh, projects? Awesome. So uh, first of all, my suggestion is uh, if, don't use the typical uh, algorithms like Iris data sets, sorry, data sets like Iris. Yes, they are great. If you're starting, they are great. But uh, please don't use the same data set that's commonly used in a lot of things. Show your expertise, right? That's not how the real data works, right? Uh, let's go to open data data world, for example. Uh, I used to, you know, enroll in a lot of government open data. That's when you get the real data, basically. And some of the Kegel data sets, for sure, uh, kind of, uh, you know, depicts the real world data. Don't take data with three or four columns or even the iris example. Iris are good to learn. I'm not against it, but uh, even the adult data set, this is some of the common data set. If you are practicing, I know you must be familiar with all these things. So some of the common simple data sets, right, which uh, we tend to see, please don't take this as a way to approach your recruiter because that's we or the recruiters wants to see your ability to so approach a real world data and problem, right? Try to take like, you know, a pretty, big data approach your government open data i know in india i know we have a government open data sets i was actually using in one of my projects i mean for personal projects of, co of course so they have a lot of uh, open data out there and it, it it actually depicts you know it's a real world data that you get so try to expand do something you know out of uh, the regular norm and then have this one page try to tell the uh, story with visualization, make it like a one pager and have it or write it about it or send it to the recruiters. Uh, Ma'am, the next question is someone is asking, uh, like uh, as you mentioned that the storytelling skills to recruiters are much important. So can you exactly say and meant by it like can you break it down sure uh, so more than recruiters let me give uh, like an example that i uh, you know used to encounter in my work so let's say uh, we approach a client and they'll come with you with the data and with a problem right uh, for example uh, this is not uh, a client example but i'm just going to relate with some kegel data set because of the NDA, I can't disclose the actual use case. So uh, I can just relate, not relate, but give you an example through a Kegel data set, right? So you're losing your customers, right? Let's say you have a client who, who just runs and comes to you, telling that, okay, I'm losing all my customers and my revenue is getting impacted. And you kind of first think, okay, is this something that you need to apply data science, right? Just because data science is popular, you cannot take it and apply it everywhere. Right? You first need to analyze and see the situation. Okay, will this, do they have data that can solve their problem, right? And then you sit with them. You first they turn their business problem into set of question, right? Okay, is, uh, is the number of lines that they have impacting their business? Uh, is they have any internet issue? Is their experience any outage? Maybe a time series problem? If they, if they have any outage and all those information about their data, you sit together, you get the data glossary, you get the data, uh, you know, uh, knowledge, you understand their data, and then you actually start using the tool. And when you're presenting before stakeholders, you can't directly tell them in a presentation, okay, I used logistic regression. I used Arima model, right? You can't say that. So you need to have a presentation. First, the business problem. What did they come to you with, right? 
and the second what actually those data told me maybe have a visualization have for uh, for example i have a book data storytelling with data uh, uh, so data yeah, it's data storytelling with data and those that book kind of helped me in determining which chart to use for which use case right so if you just have like if you have one number you can't put like entire uh, entire slide right with lot of you know sentences right you need to show numbers you need to show numbers with the correct visuals right that's how you talk with uh, your customers you can't just take your results directly rather project match your result with their uh, with their business right uh, let's say okay i got this 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 outcome and if you incorporate all these things your revenue for example is going to go up by this percent right and you are going to get out of your current situation and if you keep maintain your model and this is how it's going to impact your business right you want to tell a story out of it you uh, and once they know the story again they, their technical team is going to come with you and that time you can talk a lot about their your model they're not going to care if you are using linear regression logistic regression or even deep learning or machine learning that's not what they care they care about the problem the solution uh, their business outcome that's it and have it like a presentation five by five slide five slides not more of sentences visuals points uh, it's to the point five by five slide method is something that i like and use okay ma'am uh, thanks a lot uh, so the next question is if someone is good at maths uh, but very new in into programming then how to learn programming uh yes so i would say it's it's a practice right so if yes, you want to learn programming just start small please don't get into the bigger concept because you need to train your mind to think that you can do it that's the first thing right because i i had the same issue as well i thought programming is not for me right so how i actually trained i just thought okay i can do it right i i thought okay this is easy so i started approaching small small problems right so for example when i started learning python i started with simple addition of numbers i even then i started with simple print statement we all guys sometimes people laugh about hello world it's not that that gives you a motivation that you can program right i started with this and slowly i started uh, solving five problems a day again when i solve a problem i used to search in stack overflow and based on the answers i used to learn a lot it's all practice just be consistent in your practice right just make sure you practice five problems a day and be consistent with it for at least 5 to 6 months and i'm sure subconsciously or subconsciously you are going to this rocket okay so the the next question is what all the what are the mistakes that uh, you would want to like want us to avoid mm -hmm. in taking up internships or jobs great uh, so this is again from my own experience when i actually started uh, you know getting into this field uh, i i wanted to get into a startup right uh, why is i'm new to this field i want to know uh, i want to get a lot of experience so i want to get internship in a startup so that i can create systems from scratch right i will have lot of guidance and so on so that's how uh, that's what i approached for and when i started learning uh, internship i want to know the credibility of your of the company right uh, sometimes even people might may be blacklisted right it happens it happened to me uh, i actually went to a, a company and actually next day they are not there right so first of all make sure the company whom you are approaching are credible and second if before going there know their revenue stream know how their business model works know who are the you know who are dealing having their company learn about them everyone is there on linkedin it, it there's no one is going to stop with you know about the company know about the person working in the company know with whom you are uh, going to interview with and know their revenue stream 
uh, know their business projection, right? This is something that we don't really do. Once we get a call, we directly go and attend, but know about all these things, right? How their business is moving. And that's actually going to help you. I'm, I think I have one more minute, but I'm going to uh, just share this with you. What I did was I used to study about the company. And when I go for my interview, I, I used to tell them, okay, your business pro is projection is going like this, right? Your business is going, moving towards this. And you, I have this talent that can help you, you know, uh, reach your path. Right. That's how you sell your talent. Right. This is like a tip that I want to give at the end. But know about your company, know where they are moving, know where they are targeting, and use this to sell your skills. So uh, the next question is uh, Can you please provide the book uh, that you have mentioned about the storytelling, about the data uh, for data science? Yeah, so the book name is just a second. I'm just browsing here. Just a second. Yeah, the book name is uh, Storytelling with Data. Uh, it's a data visualization guide for business professional. If you just type, uh, you will get this like storytelling with it with data. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Uh, the next question is uh, what are the real world problems that are to be solved by data scientists? So I would say as long as you have data, you have a lot of problems to solve. Uh, for example, uh, I would say, you know, if you go to, there are two aspects in my mind. One is a social way, the social problems that we face every single day. Uh, even if you take, uh, for a one, one thing that I did for my grandmother is, uh, she used to wake up every night, for example, and, I, uh, and she's pretty old, so we don't know at the time that she wakes up. So I have a sensor at home. It's just going to record the time the, every time she crosses the sensor, and it's going to record the time, and it's going to tell me, uh, you know, give give the pattern of the time she wakes up. That's something that I have at home, right? It's it I just created by myself, right? So everywhere you have data, every there are two aspects of one is commercial aspects. In commercial aspects, there are a lot of business use cases, you know, a product use cases. How we, how you market, right? How you market your product to your community? That's a very big use case. So how do you, if you are losing your customer, how do you, you know, get them? How do you, even the Amazon recommendation, we all know that, right? The recommendation system. So these are like commercial use cases. Your credit card application. Anomaly deduction is a, uh, another like uh, important use case that, that's there in every business. If there is any outlier, if there is any anomalies that you are seeing in your business pattern, right? So these are like commercial use cases. If you get in social use cases, skill recommendation your job recommendation even at home uh, if you have something you know uh, how do you help your you know maybe elders at home your time series get the pattern and then you do it right so as long as you have data you have a lot of opportunity but in my perspective there are two commercial aspects and social aspect to it uh, the next question is is data science really in demand in industry or it is hyped uh i i would say i'm not uh, i'm not a statistics follower for the you know it's hyped or not uh you you i don't have like a global view of i mean i, I don't though i read about it uh you you never know the credibility of the resources and you don't track behind every day to know if it's hyped or not uh so i at least I am in this field not because it was hype, because I love doing it, right? So when you love doing it, you don't really have to worry about if it's hyped or not. You just enjoy, right? And that's how you sustain. It might look different now, but honestly, that's going to take you long. That's going to help you sustain in this field for long, right? As long again, as long as we are generating data, I don't. I think this field is going will be on and on forever. And this is not a new field, uh, you know, uh, just 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 letting you on. This is not a new field. We are getting, this is like getting popular because we have those machines that can perform computation on the data. We have a lot of GPUs. We have the computation resources that's available now. And now we can start using all the data, right? That's how it works. It's not like a new field that's, uh, you know, that's come that's coming all of a sudden for the past 10 years, I would say. OK, thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> uh, the next question is, are neural uh, networks 
Okay, I missed that question. Okay, it's again. Okay, are neural networks part of data science? Mm -hmm. If yes, then how do I start it and become expert in it? Yes, uh, neural network is a part of data science. Data science on high level is about getting insights from data and machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh, you know, deep learning, everything comes under that. Your data analysis, everything comes under that, right? So yes, the answer is yes. And how do I start it? So I personally liked and I personally practiced Andrew Wenji's course on Coursera. It's the most popular course. All of us take that during our, you know, preparation phase. It's Andrew NG deep learning specialization course. They have a lot of labs. If you are new, uh, you can directly go and I mean, just just take it. It's, it's an amazing course if you want to start with. And they start from scratch. You don't have to worry about this. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, the next question is, I'm curious to know a shortest timeline for a core mechanical engineering graduate research scholar to pick up the data science tools by self-learning. Yes. So first of all, if you, I, I want to know, like, if you want to get into data science field that's related to mechanical engineering, right? Again, data science is used in every field. If you are, an, if you are a civil engineer, you can use data science in one of your practice. If you're a mechanical engineer, you can use, it could be anything. Even if you're an electrical engineer and want to be a data scientist, there are options, right? Now, every company have their own data science team coming up. And if you want to pick up the skill, again, uh, know which domain that you are interested in. Are you interested in healthcare? Are you interested in, mecha I mean, mechanical related, mechanical engineer related use case and so on, right? And I'm going to share this, uh, you know, roadmap that I showed before. And, you know, take a simple data set, right? If you are just starting, I would say, again, go back to your IRIS data set. But don't use it to publicize your work or skills, but take the data set and start playing with these tools. When, only when you get into the practical way, you will be able to understand it better. Even though you take hundreds of courses, it's just going to you know tell you, give you tips. But once you start practicing it, is when you will actually ex know how to take it forward. And tools like Pandas, get familiar with Pandas, get familiar with NumPy, scikit-learn, that's all commonly used, right? Python, data structures a bit, algorithms a bit, and all the probability concepts, a bit of statistics, and uh, uh, you know, I and then you get into the Python programming, and then you start with the pandas data analysis, pandas, and then you start with NumPy, and then you get into scikit-learn, which is model development, and a bit of Docker and Kubernetes if you get and if you're interested in deployment. And there's a lot more. I'm just giving you like high level, but I will send you this link. And if, if it, it would be great if you could help me circulate this among the participants. Oh, okay, ma'am. So uh, I would like to ask you, like, how's your life uh, at, in the IBM? How hectic it is? Uh, so I'm I'm an open source team. So it's like uh i'm i mean again i would all encourage you to know more about open source it's kind of trending right now everything every software everything is just out there contribute and become a member that's one way to stand out was contributing open source yeah coming back to your question i'm uh i'm an open source machine learning team so my work deals with you know working on products improving you know I'll, writing algorithms or improving the existing models that we have. That's one aspect. And we have our own open source projects, right? Uh, it's called Model Asset Exchange and Data Asset Exchange. Uh, model Asset Exchange is where we have the deep learning model. Uh, we wrap it and provide API so people can easily use it in their application. That's And we provide open source data sets. And the other aspect that I work with, I'm the, crea the co-creator of uh, that AI Fairness 360, like Fairness Toolkit in R. So I have some of my time spent in, uh, you know, all the trusted AI tools. And I have uh, my client engagements, of course. That's like a bigger part of it. So we have a client and partner engagement. We work with them on, you know, different problems they have, trying to, you know, help them get into, you know, trying to use data science if it's required, again, if it's required. 
and then we have all the formal process and you know we engage we provide solution proof of concepts and so on so it kind of pretty much covers a wide range i would say but yeah that's how it works okay uh, thank you ma'am and basically this is for our viewers uh, those who are watching our video please do subscribe our channel for uh, such interesting and motivational and informative uh, webinars tomorrow we are hosting a live session for python uh, so thank you so much once again and thank you so much ma'am for uh, for this motivating and for motivating us and giving such a good ideas to the beginners and to to all our viewers thanks a lot thank for you. joining us thank you so much i just want to uh, you know say a few words here so i just saw a comment uh, you know uh, about uh, mentorship yes i have if you go to my linkedin i have like data storytelling uh, with sashruti so what i do is i basically again take a data set encourage people to think in a more realistic way and not go with uh, every uh, you know routine of approaching the problem so if you if you are interested feel free to ping me on linkedin uh, and there is something coming up as well i will talk about it later along with my friend so we are going to start like this initiative to help people use open source tools or open source materials and just provide like a consolidated list for people to take and not get too distracted by a lot of things so 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 many cool things are coming up i'll keep you all posted and thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and you know letting me talk about my own journey so whatever i said it's purely out of my experience and whatever i have come through and and i hope it's useful for you all and feel free to connect if you have any question and thank you so much again tech table and sawvik you for uh, rakesh everyone for giving me this opportunity yeah actually sasruti thanks a lot for joining us here and it was really a great session as you can see all the comments mm -hmm. uh, i was just displaying on the a screen as well it was mm -hmm. really amazing to see those comments i am really happy that mm -hmm. you have taken the session very beautifully mm -hmm. and it was great to see those and uh, for those who are asking about mentorship definitely you can ping her on linkedin that is what she said you can work with her on different projects she will uh, guide you on how to work on those projects and how to deal with those data and tomorrow also we have a session on python those who want to get started on python and wants to do some project cool stuff uh, do join us tomorrow and for that definitely you can subscribe to our channel right at least we can demand this for such a beautiful and informative session see sriya is writing it for you thank you thank you so much and <laughs> i'm glad it, uh, it was helpful for you all yeah all right ma'am thanks thanks for taking your time that too early morning in america right how how is your life there is everything at least okay you are safe fine yeah it's it's just getting uh, better here uh, naturally you know we don't have a lot of uh, interaction around it's kind of quiet so we we usually don't know what is happening sometimes around so yeah and what i can notice what i can notice uh, there is a board uh, just beside you uh -huh. uh, at the back and yeah. i can see you have written some some numbers something which i can see from here <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's just a lab that that in the same have. mode yeah it's it's i i have like a lot of lab sessions for myself because data science of course you can't learn it in like a week or a month or even like in a year it's you have to constantly keep learning so I, i i tend to write some of the labs some of the courses i i'm taking here so yeah there's a lot i used to take a lot of courses for people so i'm writing about it yeah that's a great thing and uh, so you are also working from your room right you're not going to the office there yeah i'm working from my room my house here so just inside my room stuck i i guess it's been one and a half years since i moved out i mean since i met my colleagues and weird office i can't wait to go back actually so yeah this is my room i have converted my room to office so this this how my office looks like if i go i have a board i have everything set up i just turn my room to office oh that's that's great that's great and i hope everything gets better soon and you you will also getting get chance to come back to india and meet your parents mm -hmm. i know it it has been very long time since you visited india yeah of course i'm hoping the we same hope things get better soon yeah hoping we stay safe <laughs> so all right then yeah leaving about yes, data yes. science stay safe everyone that's more important now 
stay safe and you all can achieve more once we get out of this and let's help everyone here everyone I mean, let's help each other and just stay safe that's what i want to say it's more important yeah thank you everybody for joining us do subscribe to the channel before you leave and see you all tomorrow have a nice day ahead shruti thank you bye bye thanks, thanks shruti thanks. thanks bye thank you ma'am bye bye